Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar organized by DocCity in partnership with OPIT, Open Institute of Technology. My name is Carolina, nice to meet you all, and I'll be your host for today's event on behalf of DocCity. I see here that um, the first people are already starting to join in. We are going to wait a few minutes before starting to allow everyone to connect. In the meantime, Feel free to say hi in our chat here in Zoom, and please tell us where you are from, since we are very curious. First of all, I want to thank everyone for joining us and thank our panelists for being here with us today. I want to introduce you all to Greta Maiocchi, Head of Marketing and Admissions, and Sara Ciabattoni, Senior Class Coordinator. Welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. Together with them, we are going to discover the online Bachelor and Master of Science programs, innovative offerings, support services, uh, the application process, and more. You'll also have the possibility to interact with our speakers and ask them questions. Talking about that, I'd like to remind you that after the presentation, we will have a Q&A session where you'll be able to ask direct questions to the panelists. So don't be shy and just type all of your questions in the Q&A section here on Zoom at the bottom of the page. Uh, and we'll go through them at the end of the webinar. Also, for those of you interested in receiving a certificate of attendance by DocCity for this free masterclass, stay tuned because we will post the link to get the certificate at the end of the session. So I think that uh, we are able to start now. Uh, welcome to those who just uh, joined us. And without further ado, I'm now leaving the floor to our panelists for their presentation. Enjoy and see you later. Thank you. Thank you so much and hello to everybody from myself and my colleague, Tara. So as already mentioned, my name is Greta, um, Head of Marketing and Recruitment Admissions at OPIT. And together with Tara, the Senior Class Coordinator, we will give you an overview about our courses, our offer, the support that we give to all our students. And we're here to answer any questions that, that you may have. Okay, so a few words about who we are and our mission. This is very important to us, especially Nowadays, uh, the world seems to be changing. We had a, a very interesting session uh, last week with one of our professors um, about the career changes in this very uh, turbulent period where AI seems to be everywhere. So our mission is actually um, really this one, to give like a, an affordable education in the field of technology, to give like all the knowledge and the tools to our students in order to unlock progress and employment to make sure that uh, all, all the people that interact with us have the right skills on a global scale by providing top education that is also uh, affordable. So among our key facts and what sets us apart, um, we are happy to say that we believe in quality and that's why we believe in accreditation as well. Our courses are all accredited and recognized at the European level uh, within the, the right bodies, accreditation bodies. Um, our courses are online, fully online, that allows us, all of you to access the courses from wherever you want, given the flexibility, of course, to study from your own country. The focus is on technology and why is that? Nowadays, technology is disrupting and it is a disruptor um, of everything that is happening today and in the next future. So we believe that that is a very important um, sector and a domain that has to be tackled by anyone who wants to approach the education. Our courses are really career aligned. We started by talking with companies and designing the courses with companies. Our professors are uh, coming, mo most of them are coming from companies or do the consultations with companies. And that's important because we want to make sure that the programs are modern and aligned with what is necessary today and in the next future. Um, the support that we give is always available. So even we are even though we are online, the support is always there and Sarah will tell you more about it in when well, in the next few slides. And finally, we, we believe in inclusivity and affordability. Uh, we were talking today with some candidates from the US comparing prices and costs of education. So we try to make uh, our courses as much affordable, as much inclusive as possible. What I said before about quality, it's really key for us. And we start from the faculty that come to class. The rector of OPIT is Professor Profumo, has been Minister of Education in Italy. That means that 
as a minister of education, you are in in your mind always the good of the country and the good of a country within Europe as well. And it's been also rector of Politecnico di Torino, one of the most important technological institutions in Italy. And that's like a key factor of quality. So when recruiting professors, our key main objective is to have professors, it is to have professors that know how to teach, but also that are, are truly aligned with what is required today, the competencies that are required today. As you can see in these slides, and you can have a look at our website for more faculty members, our professors are either accommodations or they come from different type of companies, from PayPal, McKinsey, Morgan Stanley, but they do bring to class what it is today that is needed in the companies from a technological point of view. And that's, again, it's fundamental for, for our courses. Um, regarding the programs, I'm going to give you an overview of the six programs that we're going to have in 2024, and I'm very happy then to just have a single a chat with each one of you after this presentation, myself and my colleagues from the recruitment team, and also Sara. Uh, so I'm going to give you an overview, but then again, if you want to, for if you are looking for more details, we can just have single one-to-one uh, -one, uh, meetings. We have two bachelor degrees and four master degrees starting in September 2024, all in the domain of technology. So we have the bachelor in computer science and the digital business, and four master in science um, regarding data science and artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, digital business, and responsible AI, which is focused on artificial intelligence. The bachelors that we have, so the first one is the course that started also last year. Um, it's called Modern for what I said before, because it has been designed thinking about computer science, focusing on computer science as it is required today. So the first terms, the one from one to four, the core terms um, are about like the fundamentals, the foundations of computer science from programming to cloud computing, machine learning, artificial intelligence itself, software engineering, um, there are foundations that then allow you to just move on to the term number five with the flexibility to choose a specific path. So you can just decide to specialize, for instance, in cybersecurity or data and artificial intelligence, cloud computing, or the metaverse and gaming. Um, in, in case you're not decided about a specific uh, specialization, you can pick a mix different electives from the array that we have and choose the ones that you think more uh, suitable for your needs. And finally, you have the dissertation uh, at the end. That's a very important part of the program where you put in place your skills. It's the execution itself. And you can also um, do an internship during this period. So together with the company, you will write your dissertation about a specific topic, of course, within computer science. Regarding careers, you can become a software developer, a data scientist, or a web developer, IT analyst, and all the related job of computer science. But what is very important is this is really linked to computer science as it is today. There are no other type of subjects that sometimes you can find in university courses or something that is not aligned with what computer science is today. The other second bachelor uh, is quite interesting, actually. It's digital biz in digital business. And it is a digital business linked to tech. As I said, we are focused on tech, and we believe that this is important, fundamental today to have as a skill, as a skill, like a, a tools, tools that everybody should have um, nowadays. So in this bachelor, we integrate the foundational principles of digital business, business and economics, but with a robust IT foundation. So in a way, bridging the gap between what is um, strategy and execution, but in the digital age. So more and more companies require today uh, new employees that have this digital awareness and can actually execute from a digital point of view linked to IT. So you will also have, gain a lot of practical skills uh, through hands-on project and industry connection within the core courses and in the electives. And the electives are a blend of what is computer science, but also digital business or so marketing, product management, project management, etc. And at the end, again, you have the dissertation and you can run it through an internship as well. From a career point of view, you can become a digital business analyst or um, digital product manager, marketing manager, or a digital transformation analyst, 
So everything within the domain of digital business, but with a good foundations of IT. Moving to the masters, we have four type of masters, master of science. So they are just um, um, accredited as a master of science with 90 CTS. Um, we have the master of science in data science and artificial intelligence, which is a 90 ECTS. Sorry, I didn't say it before. ECTS are the credits recognized at the European level and the bachelors are 180 ECTS and the master's 90 ECTS. Um, the master in applied data science and artificial intelligence um, has been designed with a very clear mindset of merging what is tech with data science. So you will get a lot of foundational tech courses, for, for instance, learning how to use Python, uh, machine learning, or artificial intelligence, cloud computing. And then you will move on to apply everything that you learned in the first part in a, applied courses, apply courses in different sectors. So you get a solid foundation of what is data science and applied artificial intelligence to the business sectors. And altogether, in every like in every term, you have also we will have courses about communication, project management, business strategy, in order just to merge, as I said, to be at the intersection of management and tech within the departments. The careers are within data, the data science array, data science and data analytics, uh, and data analysis. So you can become a data analytics consultant, or an um, high consultant, or a data scientist, um, and it's done in a way that at the end again you can do the, the capstone project it is it's within the company you're working or within another company if um, there is the possibility but anyway you have to write your capstone project so the master of science compared to the bachelor are for people that already have a bachelor of course but mo most of our students today are um, come already working in a company I want to further specialize or move the specialization to, to a different domain, in this case, in data science and uh, AI. The other master, which is new, is going to start in September, and it's quite interesting and required by companies, it's cybersecurity. So in this world full of artificial intelligence and technology, of course, attacks, cyber attacks are um, and very frequent. So this is like a field that is becoming more and more important for companies and also something that from career-wise um, is going to, in, 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 let's say, like, require a lot of abilities in the future. So abilities that are not only technical. So the fact that it's called enterprise and the, the way that we design it is like a mix, again, of technical, but also managerial with a strategic view. Uh, you can be a good te technical cyber security analyst, but if you lack the management strategic way of, of looking at things, you may not be um, useful for the company you work for. So that's why we just combined the two. We have a comprehensive approach approach of both technical, but also managerial and strategic, strategic knowledge in order to meet what is the demand today from the market of professionals that are quite versatile. The, the, the master is aligned with official industry certifications. You can see them here depicted in the picture. So there are three specific industry certifications. Uh, the number of certifications in cybersecurity is very high. And we just decided to align the courses with these three so that he, you can have actually a professionalism within cybersecurity that is well recognized. In fact, as careers, you can become a cybersecurity consultant, an information security manager or a compliance officer or a C a CISO. And how is it done? So you have at the beginning, the core courses, the technical and, and management cybersecurity courses. Then you apply those in the second part. So from like the foundation, you move on to the strategy and application. And finally, the execution in the capstone project. And again, you can do it within your own company or in like uh, with, with one of our professors. Of course, there are always tutors that, and professors that will support you. And you can also have uh, the possibility to do the project with an, within another company. This master is um, quite uh, of, uh, different from the others because you have different exit points. If you do the um, three terms, so the 90 CTS, you, you get a master of science in enterprise cybersecurity, but you can exit before in case you just need the foundation. And so you get a postgraduate certificate after 30 CTS, or after 60 CTS, you get a postgraduate diploma. This is something that um, is flexible according to your needs. 
Then we have the master in applied digital business. Um, this is like go, is the master after the bachelor in digital business. So it's for those people that already are working in a company and maybe they're working within um, a sector or a function that requires to further um, understand what is the application of digital business. So you want to lead the digital transformation within your company and excelling what is the digital native environment. So there are many courses about digital business and then, of course, the application of digital business within the corporation. In a way, we blend the theory with the practical expertise in order to move between what is technology and digitalization, but also business. This is very like interesting as a master because most of like all the pro the jobs today have a part of a digital business, apply digital business. So if you want to just further develop your skills in that, this is the right master for you to become, for instance, a digital business consultant or innovation manager, a digital marketing manager. So from analyzing data, understanding the, the project management of data, the product, how to move from product management to leading product man management within the this very disruptive period where um, analytics and data and technology are disrupting a little bit all the business that we, we see today. So as I said, the digital business course is the beginning, then the applied one, and at the end again, the capstone project. And finally, the last one is the master in responsible artificial intelligence. Uh, this master can be actually um, last for a little bit longer, so you can do the standard period with 90 CTS on, or arrive to 120 CTS, adding um, a, an extra semester. That's just for research and, and the interest for you. Um, this is a little bit more technical compared to other the other ones. Um, it's about artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence that is responsible in the sense that we just mix what is AI with the ethical responsibility of, of using AI. So it's a human-centered artificial intelligence master that is also aligned with what is the EU Artificial Intelligence Act. Um, again, in the presentation that we've seen last, last week, and I would suggest you to just go on our YouTube channel and have a look, we were talking about the careers that AI is bringing and the career that AI is going to just kind of um, surpass. But the main question that we have here is like how to use AI in the proper way, how to use it responsibly. Um, so this master is something that um, is aligned with the EU Act, but is also aligned with the modern idea of how to use technology in the best way. Um, it is a little bit more technical. It's about artificial intelligence advanced and the application of artificial intelligence. And at the end, again, you have the capstone project. Uh, if you want more details about the courses, again, like we can have a one-to-one -one session and we'll explain you and show you all the details. Okay, so this is just like a short overview about our courses, uh, but then we wanted to, to talk to you about how do we study here. So the learning experience, how it is to study online, to have the support that is always there and just to interact with the other peers and with the professors. So I leave now these slides to Sarah. Thank you, Greta. So now that you have had this comprehensive introduction, I'd like to offer you a glimpse at uh, what it's like to study at OPIT. I'm just struggling a moment here with the remote control. Bear with me. So here we are. First of all, uh, we are an online degree, but uh, you will also have plenty of opportunities to interact live with your peers and also with your professors. So you will have a mix of recorded content and live sessions. But as Greta mentioned, many of our students are working or they, are, they have other life commitments. So all the live sessions are also recorded so that you have the option to either meet with professors and peers and tutors live or simply watch the recording. And also what you will learn is a bit different compared to many other institutions because we chose the competence-based approach. This means that you're not only gaining knowledge, but you're also developing skills along with your studies. 
And this also means that you would have progressive assessments. In other words, you will not have one final exam, but throughout the term, you will work on projects along with your classmates and with the guidance of your professors and tutors so that you can apply week by week and month by month what you are learning. And as Greta mentioned, a lot of what you'll be learning is aligned with professional certifications. Greta was now introducing the master's in enterprise cybersecurity, many of the modules prepared for that master's and also others are aligned with professional certifications so that you will be almost ready, ready to enter the job market even while you're just studying. And you will not be doing all this alone, okay? To support you in your transition from your studies uh, into your career, we have career services and we have tutors for the academic side of the support. I will get more into details about this in a moment. And another interesting thing that sets us aside from many other institutions is the possibility to choose between the fast and the regular track option. With the regular track option, our bachelor degree would last three years. With the fast track, you would be graduating in two years. That means that you would be having to take classes also during the summer. And that would give you an opportunity to finish all the credits within two years. As for the masters, the masters of 90 credits usually last in the regular track a year and a half. With the fast track option, you would be able to conclude all the credits within one year, with the exception of the masters in responsible AI, which if you choose the 120 credits option, then in, it will last uh, a year and a half, okay? And then let's take a look. Let's move to the next slide, please. All right, and let's talk about the support that is received by students. So although we are online, we really invest in offering all around support to our students. This includes three main areas. First of all, administrative support. You know, those are all the bureaucratic affairs that a student might need to be dealing with, such as requesting a certificate, a transcript, and so on. In this, you will not have to line up in front of an office. You can do everything online from the learning platform. And then, of course, the most important side of your studies would be um, the academic guidance. In this case, you would be supported not only by professors, but also from tutors that are available every day of the year, okay? Even weekends. And of course, once you are done with your studies, you might be uh, concerned about how to transition in the job market if you don't have a job already. Greta mentioned many of our students already have a job, but maybe you're looking for the next career move. In that case, we have career services to support you. And let's dive a little bit deeper into the learning support. I already mentioned, and Greta as well mentioned, that we have chosen carefully our professors. Not only they are gay, great academic leaders, but they're also experts in their field. This ensures that what you will be learning is not only academically rigorous, but also useful in the job market. It's exactly what the uh, employers are looking for. And as I mentioned earlier, you would be meeting professors during live sessions, but if you're not able to meet them during the live sessions, you can always reach out also to tutors. And tutors are available every day of the week, including weekends. You can reach out to them with questions about coursework, or maybe you're struggling with a specific point that was mentioned during a live session. They're there to guide you every step of the way. And as I mentioned earlier, many of our students work and we expect that this will be the case maybe also for many of you today. So one big challenge is how to manage time, okay? How to balance your studies with other life commitments. In this case, we offer time management workshops and the entire degree is designed in a flexible enough way so that you will not have to be there on an exact day and time to complete an exam. But our assessments are spaced out through a week or even longer, giving you the flexibility you need to complete your studies along with work. 
And it's not just professors and tutors, but you would also have a class coordinator that you can meet during virtual office hours. So just like we're doing now over a Zoom call, that will give you the support you need, for example, in related to academic affairs or administrative issues. And lastly, we shouldn't forget that joining up, it also means joining a virtual community of students. Many of our students uh, tell us how they're learning, not only from professors and tutors, but also from one another. It's not the same as other you know, online experiences where it feels a bit isolating. No, here our students are a big community that supports each other. And now moving to the career support. All right, career services. Of course, many of our students, as we mentioned, are already working, but that doesn't mean that they don't need career support. And some are maybe just, you know, fresh graduates, they don't work already. So we have very comprehensive support in these regards, for example, career coaching and support. This gives you an opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with a career coach to identify, for example, your value proposition for an employer or identify your career goals. Once you have that clarity, then you can work on, for example, gathering from our resource hub, whether it is to draft a CV, prepare for an interview, or maybe um, polish up your LinkedIn page. That's everything you can get at uh, Opet. And it's not just uh, within OPET that we offer support, but we also invite experts for master classes. This could happen within the, your courses or also as additional webinars to complement what our students are learning. And many of our students are looking for a career change, but many are looking for the first job. And but this is something that we encourage during your studies to conduct an internship. This can be uh, completed as, you know, along with your thesis, you might work on a project in a company and then write your final project about this. Anyway, uh, I move into the next slide. I don't want to be the only one talking about the learning experience at OPET because I also want to, you to hear from one of our students, Angela, uh, who is located in the USA. And by the way, we did not mention this, but OPET students are located across the whole globe in many different time zones and in many different industries. So let's hear what Angela has to say about her experience at OPET. Uh, my name is Angela Mantia, and I'm a senior product manager in Austin, Texas. I do not have a bachelor's degree. I have work experience. I've always thought about going back to school. I took some classes early on, and then as my career progressed, you know, I never really found the time to do it, and I felt like it was very constraining. I would have to either go into class or I would have to sort of sit online and distance learning at the time was really about reading something. It wasn't very interactive. And the more I looked into it and the more classes I saw and what it covered, I, I became super interested in it. Really, I'm enjoying the people in the class, like the students that are with me. We've all sort of band together. We help each other out. We talk constantly. I've never experienced that in a classroom or workshops. It's like they really get a lot of joy out of like helping you through a problem. And so I think more than anything, I'm enjoying meeting different people from all over the world, which is super interesting. And knowing that, you know, I fall behind, I can ask someone like, I don't understand this question. Can you help explain to me? And there are probably three or four students that jump in and help you. Uh, my name is Angela Mantia and okay. I'm a senior. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she was like talking again. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. That was very good. And then I see that there are some questions. We're going to get back to you about all the questions at the end of these um, uh, short, like um, remaining slides that we have. Uh, just a few words about the entry requirements and tuition fees that we have. 
So first of all, the bachelor and master degrees, as I said, they are accredited and recognized at the European level. So the general entry requirements are the same for anyone who wants to attend another university. You need a previous education level. So to do a bachelor, we need your high school certificate. And to do a master degree, you need your undergraduate degree. So a bachelor in any other disciplines. There are some specification, specific requirements for the master in responsible AI because it's a little bit more technical. Um, regarding the certificate of English, we require a B2 level certificate or equivalent. So if you have studied in English as well, we can recognize that. So the level required is B2. And then we also accept credit transfer. So if you have started studying in another university, you've done it like maybe some years ago, and then you just drop out because you started working or you just weren't interested anymore, we do accept previous studies and also work experience. So there is a recognition of previous learning um, um, process, let's say, and that we follow, and we would recognize both the previous study that is not finished and the work experience. At how to apply is quite straightforward. We have um, an application online on the website. So you just fill in the form uh, that you can find on the website uh, and then upload your documents, is your CV, for instance, your certificate of English, if you already have it, definitely your high school certificate or undergraduate degree, so your transcripts and diploma, and any other relevant document that you think that is uh, useful for us to get to know you. Those are the admission documents that are clearly listed again um, on the application form. Then you will sit for a very quick interview, a motivational interview, just to get to know you better and just to see like uh, if the course is a, a match for you. So it's, uh, you match the, the university and we match you as well. And then you can start your journey. So upon admission, you will receive a contract and you will be required to pay the deposit. And then you will start the course in September. Uh, the 16th of December is the date. Uh, at the moment. <laughs> the tuition fees are um, outlined here and also on the website. So you can pay per installment or you can pay uh, in a lump sum. It is up to you. If you pay per installment, the bachelor fee, is the standard is 2,250 per term. The master will be like, uh, again, we have the three terms as well, or you pay the entire um, amount. The early bird, we have an option. If you pay before March 15th, there is a discount, both in the bachelor and in the master. And you can also pay the entire sum in advance. So for the bachelor of the master, and you receive a discount of 10%. We have different types of scholarship, up to 40%. And to apply for that, first you send the application, which is, by the way, free of charge. So there is no application fee. And then you will just be asked to uh, sit for the interview, and we will send you an, an, another form for the scholarship requirement. Okay, so I suppose... This was it. As I said, you can meet with us in a different way. You can meet one of our students, as we said before. They're all over the world, and they're very happy uh, and willing to, to meet you in case you want to ask questions directly to them. So we have students from Cyprus, Iraq, Ghana, Brazil, Italy, US, Canada, a lot of other countries, Ireland, <laughs> UK, etc. And uh, or you can meet again with us. Sarah mentioned it before about career service. The next webinar that we have is on the 6th of February at 5. It's with our colleague, Mike, is manager of career service at OPIT, and he's going to explain what it is to unlock your future in this very particular moment and period in the next few years, like careers are changing. So we will explain you the career support that we give to our students. Or if you're interested in cybersecurity and generative artificial intelligence, we have a webinar coming up on the 14th of February with Professor Tomislav Vazar. He's is the uh, director of the um, cybersecurity master and is very happy to give you an insight about these two topics, generative AI and cybersecurity, how to defend the emerging threats. Again, if you want to meet, like have a one-to-one -one meeting, so as I said before, you can meet us in different way. You can send us an email to hello at opit.com. You can send us like a WhatsApp message. Here you have the QR code that you can utilize. Um, you can check on our website. Uh, for more information, fill out the form as well there to be contacted back, or you can give us a call, and here is the number um, that you can see. But anyway, these slides will be available to you after this webinar as well. And now I think it's time for the Q&A. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Hello again, everyone. And uh, first of all, of course, thank you, our panelists, for their accurate presentation. 
Uh, I see here that we already have some questions from the participants. I'd like to remind you that there's still time to ask questions and you can do so by writing it here in the Q&A box, box. So uh, let's start with the first one. That is, hello, can I have more information about the fast track course? Do I need particular requirements to access? Um, I can take that. No, you don't need particular like requirements. Once you start, you can decide if you want just to study over the summer. And then we just um, anticipate one, basically one specific term you anticipated during the summer. That's the way it is. So no requirements required, but just your time. <laughs> Great, thank you. And the next one is, uh, can I start whenever I want or are there deadlines to be respected? And also are the classes recorded? And this is connected to the next one that uh, asks if, if he or she should be attended live or there are also registrations of the lessons. Okay, regarding starting date, we have a starting date, which is the 16th of September. We do believe that the class should be composed of people that meet on a weekly basis. So the classes are not mandatory. Uh, we re highly recommend to attend them or just to just participate in classes whenever you can, because it's great to just have uh, see your peers and talk to your professors, but they're not mandatory at all. Uh, so you can watch them recorded after on the LMS. We have Canvas LMS. The platform is very good. If you want to have a look at it, there is like, again, another webinar on our YouTube channel that explains you how to use the, um, the platform. So no, uh, you can start uh, with us. You start with us on the 16th and then you don't have to attend the lessons but you have to watch them recorded. And what is mandatory is to do the um, assignments. I don't know if you want to say something, Sarah, about that for the assignments. Yes, exactly. So you don't have necessarily to be there during the live sessions, although we highly recommend it. But regarding the assignments, you have a, a you know weekly uh, assignments or every two weeks, so you have to be there online to complete and progress through the coursework on a weekly basis. There is flexibility, but you cannot study everything at the end of the term. We expect commitment uh, throughout the term, and it's also a good way to interact with professors and your peers. Great, thank you. And let's move to the next one. That is, are the teachers students with more experience or professors? All right, I can take this one. No, tutors are not students. They are professionals that have been trained to assist our students. They all have at least a master's degree. Many of them either have a batch, um, sorry, a PhD or they are pursuing PhD studies at the moment. So uh, they're not students. They are trained to support our students. Okay, thank you so much. And the next one, how the virtual community is organized? All right, I can take this one as well. <laughs> I um, So there are different venues for students to interact. First of all, there is the learning platform where all the asynchronous material is found. And students also often have discussions, asynchronous discussions on the learning platform. Sometimes it's initiated by professors who give some prompts. Sometimes it's the students who bring up some interesting topics. Then we also give venues for more live interaction. This is done on our Slack community. And I would also like to add that our students, as I mentioned, are a very close, tight group. And they also develop their own uh, groups, for example, WhatsApp groups to support each other and so on. Fantastic. Um, how does the master thesis work? Could you elaborate on that, please? Okay, that's a very important question. Thank you for asking. So the, the thesis is a very significant assignment. It's an assignment that is given to students during the degree and it consolidates the ability of the students and is the execution at the end of the master. So this is very important, both the master and the bachelor. So it's a project, it's a, a challenging project that is um, decided with the students and so there are different projects some project some projects are offered by companies some projects are just uh, maybe discussed with the students because they're interested in a specific 
topic and you work and plan with the mentor, so one of the professors that will attend your thesis throughout the project. And if you do an internship or you work in a corporation, of course, you're going to just liaise both with the tutors the professor and the internal tutor of the company. So it's um, it's a piece of work that is very important and is presented and delivered before a committee at the end of the uh, thesis, pro um, at the end of the term. Great, thank you. And the next one, do you also have English courses to improve the language? Oh, yes, so we do have technical English at the beginning. <laughs> so it's not only English, it's technical English. So it's English for computer science, technology and everything. So it's going to be like a course at the beginning of the, uh, for instance, the Bachelor in Computer Science. But also I remind you that our professors are all mother tongue English speakers or just they speak very excellent English. And your classmates are also like people speak in English. Most of them, uh, I well, all of them have a C2 level, but most of them are C1 or C2. So you're going to learn as well from your peers uh, and from the others, from the other students and from the professors. But there is a, a course on English, technical English at the beginning. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, the next one, if I am currently in university, but I'm going to leave that, can I use the credit of that? I am studying uh, artificial intelligence at the moment and I work as a residence manager. Can I use my studies and work as credits? I want to study digital business with OPIT. Yeah, that's a very relevant question, absolutely. Uh, what you have to do, if you haven't applied yet, you need to send us the application. We're going to have an interview. We're going to review your CV and your transcripts, and then we're going to send you the link for the recognition of previous learning. There is a committee that will look at your transcripts and also your work experience and get back to you. So we discount what you already have done, and you don't have to do some courses. Okay. Okay, great. Um, another student asks, uh, is there a different fee for the fast track? No, the fee is the same because the terms and the content is the same. It's just the, the duration of the course that is different. Okay, thank you. Um, the next one, and if someone gets credits for previous work study, does that person get discount of the price? Yes, sorry. Yes, you do. Basically, there is a recognition of credits. Each credit has a, like a value that is discounted from your fee. Absolutely. So you do not only like not have to attend the class, but you also get a discount. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, yeah, the next one is more of a um, phrase <laughs> than a question. It is, uh, hi, so without a um, B2 degree English language, we won't be able to apply for it, right? Well, we need a certificate. A certificate can be done also like with Duolingo, for instance, which is uh, something that we find very accurate, is not very long and just goes to the point. We have also an interview with you. So we need not a degree, but a certificate. It can be, as I, as I said, a certificate with Duolingo is, we accept it. Great, I think it's useful. Um, can we have a one-on-one -on -one calls with the tutors or professors as well? We sometimes organize one-to-one -one calls with professors, absolutely. So you can actually send us like uh, your request after your like uh, application or just contact us and we organize that. You can also talk with our founder. Uh, it's always very happy to talk to, to our um, candidates or to the director. So yes, we can organize that. Okay, great. And the next one. Hello. Firstly, thank you for all the great informations. I am finishing my graduation in bioprocesses and biotechnology engineering this year in Brazil. Would it be possible to transition to a course or master course like cybersecurity over at Alpit? Uh, yes, like if with uh, um, an, an engineering degree, absolutely, you can start cybersecurity. You have the right requirements. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, great. And the last one is, um, isn't there a bachelor thesis? Yes, there is. Um, I'm not sure, like if I didn't mention it, my, my, my apologies is the last term. It's very important. It's the dissertation. Um, it's called dissertation. We call it in dissertation of a bachelor capstone project for uh, the master, but it's a thesis anyway. You're going to write a thesis at the end. Okay. 
and there is also okay no this is like i saw the, the question now for the users and professors maybe sarah can take that yes 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 i suspected that was yeah, sorry. The, the question <laughs> yeah. but yes yeah, so professors and tutors are, are available to support you in different ways uh, for example professors you know you can always find them during live sessions every week and of course, if you cannot attend the live session, you can reach out to them to see if you can schedule another moment. And also tutors, on the other hand, as I mentioned earlier, they're available every day of the week. We have an embedded uh, learning support form on our learning platform, so you can send them any queries, really. And they're there even during weekends. That can be very helpful for students that maybe, you know, work during the week. Amazing. And yeah, the last one is a more general one question. Uh, that is, we can choose any course from the university. Um, yes, of course. Like uh, as I said, there are the prerequisites are the level of English, and for the master in uh, responsible AI is a little bit more technical. So we, ha you, if you don't have the technical requirements to access it, you're gonna have to you have to just study more courses before. It. But yes, you can choose any type of course. We're happy to have you. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, um, thank you so much. I think we answered all the questions. Again, uh, I want to thank our panelists for the interesting debate and also thank everyone for joining us and for your questions. I'd like to remind everyone interested in receiving a certificate of attendance by Doxity that you can click on the link that I'm sending in the chat, in the chat right now and request it. And before we say goodbye, I'd like to ask our panelists if uh, they would like to leave our participants with a message, maybe. Yes, thank you. Uh, maybe there is another question. No. Oh. Sorry, maybe, just like uh, looking. I lost it. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, we're going to close in like a minute. <laughs> Don't <you>. worry. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. No, just like a message that I thought it was very nice that um, one, the, um, as I said, we had this very, very interesting presentation last, last week about careers and um, careers and AI actually saw so what is going to happen. And I, if the, the panelists finish the, the presentation with a, a sentence from Malcolm X, so education is the passport to the future. But was it most importantly, like for tomorrow, belongs to those who prepare for it today. So my message to you is like, whatever school, I'm not saying open, but whatever school, choose your education. This is very important. We are starting to be in a, in a period of very disruptive careers. Like career-wise, it's going to be very disruptive. You have to be prepared. Jobs are changing very fast. Uh, this, the entire <laughs> situation within, like, uh, wherever we are, wherever we work, is changing very fast. You need to have the right skill set. So my suggestion to you is just be prepared. Um, and invest in yourself. That's the most important thing that you can do, invest in yourself and in your education. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks again to our speakers and everyone connected with us today. And of course, I hope to see you again in the next webinar organized by DocCity. So goodbye, everyone, and have a nice day. Thank yes. you. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.